Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest in episode 4 of Cool Linux Tools. So my purpose for this series really is to share the really cool tools and software that we have available in Linux. We've got a great selection and for new users or for people looking to Linux for maybe a replacement to their current operating system, it's sometimes difficult to find uh, software that you know maybe you've used in another platform. Now there are websites that kind of give you a comparison and I'll uh, probably put some of those in the video notes and then viewers if you have a favorite website that does a comparison of software from you know one platform over to Linux uh, please share that in the video comments. So appreciate it there. Let's go ahead and jump into today's cool tool and that is Photo Film Strip and you might guess that Photo Film, film Strip from the name um, what it does. It allows you to take individual photos and um, put them together and create a video with transitions and audio. Now this tool really does one thing and it does it really really well and, and makes it I think is about, about as simple as you could make it. Uh, we're going to step through the process here but just imagine you've gone on family vacation and you've taken lots of photos. Well you could you know, you could sit down and share those photos the way most people do today. You slide through your phone or tablet and here's this image and here's the next image. Or you could spend a little time and go in and make it fun and creative and share your photos that way or perhaps tell your story while the video is running. So just one idea for how you would use uh, this piece of software. All right, let's jump in here. Now it's not evident right out of the gate exactly what you're going to do, but um, the first thing you you would do is create a new project. You can do that from here or here. While I'm up here, let's just go ahead and look at this version. This is Photo Film Strip version 2.1. And uh, I need to also, let's just look at the credits here. I need to put the credits here because this is this is great work here. So we'll put that in the video notes as well. Uh, thank you, Jens and Marcus. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, create our new project. And I'm going to call this Horsepower. Now you've got an option. Once you've given the project a name, you've got an option where to save that, what folder. And uh, so you could go to a particular directory. Uh, I'm going to keep this one at default here. The next option you have is aspect ratio for the video. I'm going to stay at default 16.9, but you've got 4, 3, and 3, 2 as options. Now you could also change, or excuse me, toggle on the total length. So maybe you're using this for a particular project and you know the exact length that the video needs to be. You could go in and set that here and then you could also go in and add an audio file. So it could be you know, something you have pre-recorded that you want to play along or it could be simply um, you know, music playing in the background. We're going to go ahead and toggle that off and click OK. Now the next step here, and they make it kind of obvious here, drag some pictures onto this text or click the button below. So we're going to go ahead and pick our individual photos and add those in all at once. It pop populates the photos fairly fast. Uh, you'll notice there is some transition time where the images when they're first loaded in they're a little blurry and then as you click on an image you'll see it kind of come into sharpness there and that's going to be dependent upon your hardware as well as the resolution of the image that you're pulling in. I recommend that you use the highest quality resolution images you can for this and the reason is because you've got some transitions that allow you to zoom in and zoom out and so if you have a low resolution image and you zoom in it's going to look pixelated and so we'll kind of get into some examples of that. Now we're going to start a little different here. We're going to go from the bottom and work our way up. You'll also notice that as soon as you import your photos you've got some options for some additional tools here and so we'll kind of step through these. All right we're going to start at the bottom. You can individually select each photo and apply several options to each of those photos. In this case I'm going to for example I could left click and drag that photo to the end or you have a arrow here that you can toggle and move that over. You also have options with that photo highlighted for subtitle and then we're going to move back over here. You could rotate it. In this case it doesn't work here so we're going to turn it back. You also have an effect. You have no effect, black and white, or sepia tone. And I'm going to leave that with no effect for now. Now you could also go in and adjust the acceleration and that's the acceleration of the transition and we'll get into that in just a moment. Um, or excuse me, the acceleration of the position on the photo. 
zooming in, zooming out. You could go linear, accelerated, or delayed. We're going to stay with default, but you can adjust that there, and that's per image. And then you have transition options. You have none, fade, or roll. We're going to stay with default at fade, and you can adjust that as well here. All right, so we're going to move on up. Now here you could go in and say random motion, and when you choose random motion, it's simply going to apply random motion on that photo set. So you could go in here, random motion, and it's going to change things around, random motion. All right, now you could go ahead and change here set motion end to start or set motion start to end. So it's going to change from one side to the other. Let's say we see this motion in place here where you're zoomed out and then over here you're kind of zoomed in. Let's move that. You can click and drag and manually adjust this, which we're going to step through and do here. But let's say I wanted to swap those two. You've got a quick toggle here for that. So now you've got you're zoomed in here and zoomed out here. All right. So that's just an example. All right, let's step through the process here, and I'm going to go in and manually adjust this just to kind of give you the idea behind it. So on this uh, beautiful Bugatti here, I want to zoom in on that great looking front end there, and then I want it to end zoomed out where you're seeing the entire vehicle. So we're going to do that with that particular image. Now you can see here, if you've got a low resolution image and you're starting out zoomed in close like that, it could be very pixelated. Now here we're seeing the entire vehicle and here we're going to zoom in kind of close so we'll leave that for the sake of time. I'm not going to be very, very particular. And again, let's zoom in on the front of that Bugatti and here we'll leave that as it is. Actually, no, let's just do a quick switch. There we go. We'll do the opposite. And here we have a Cohen seg. So I'm going to zoom out so we see most of the Cohen seg and let's zoom in here to another section maybe the, the three-quarter of the back of the Cohen seg you get the idea here and then we have a Renault so let's zoom in on the Renault here maybe like that and then we'll zoom out so you see the entire vehicle alright so we've got all of our transitions up oh, let's do the stallion the entire stallion I wonder if this is an Italian stallion I wonder if that's Italy. It could be an Italian stallion. All right, so we are zoomed in there, and that's the way it's going to end. So once you've got all of this in place, again, you could go in and put subtitles for all of or for each of the photos. So if you're on a vacation and you know you've got a shot that's you know uh, at a particular landmark or something, you could type that in. All right, so we're done here. We're going to go ahead and um, render the film strip. Now you've got options here for rendering and those are format options so you go from VCD MPEG all the way down to X264. I'm simply going to choose MPEG4 here. I am not a pro at you know one codec or uh, format over the other and you're welcome to comment in the uh, you know video section if you've got a favorite format and maybe explain why. I'm just not um, uh, I'm not in the know enough there to, to tell you which format is better than the other. Uh, you do have some resolution options as well, so I'm going to go in and choose HD here. You could, of course, choose 1920 by 1080 full HD. We're just going to go with standard HD. It'll render a little faster that way. And then you've got type, which is PAL and NTSC, or PAL and NTSC. Uh, here in the U.S., I believe it's NTSC, so we're going to stay with that. You do have some uh, fine-tuning options here for the format you choose not a lot but a little alright so once you're all set up you're good every everything's good to go you're sure everything's the way you want it you simply click start and the render process uh, really is not that bad it's gonna vary depending on your hardware you know it you know it's gonna vary depending on the amount of RAM your processor speed things like that your video card um, you know this renders fairly well uh, granted I only have six images but uh, Again, uh, this is Photo Film Strip if you're interested. And, uh, you know, think about it this way. We've all got lots of photos either sitting on a backup drive or sitting in the cloud, and they're kind of just sitting there. And maybe once a year or twice a year, you know, around the holidays, you start looking at photos. This would be a good way, if you have some time, to go in and quickly and easily create a fun way, a fun way to share these videos uh, with other family members or friends that could be a little more interactive. So, uh, all right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and close this, excuse me, close this all out. And we'll go ahead and take a look. We'll save this. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our work here into our folder. 
horsepower. You'll see the folder is HD. Now the output name, perhaps I missed a setting here, that should have been called horsepower, but perhaps it's just user error there. But anyway, let's go ahead and check it out. So you can see there we were zoomed in. So again, if you've got a low resolution image, it's going to look pixelated. So you see this, the transitions, you get the idea there. We could have music in the background or you know, maybe we recorded some audio or something like that specific to this. I think it's nice. I think, um, you know, again, it does one thing and it does it really well and it keeps it simple and easy to use and um, and there's not a thing wrong with that. I think that's it's a great piece of software. So hopefully this is new to you and um, maybe you see the use behind it and there's our stallion to end this video. So, um, you know, I hope this helps and uh, share this with friends. Uh, you know, if you've got friends who are into uh, photos and things like that. Maybe this is something that would be helpful to them. So uh, that's it for now, and we will check you later.